Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We'll be speaking with Dr. Cynthia Silva in this segment, Vice President of Clinical Affairs at Outset Medical. She's joining us to discuss a recent abstract that was presented at the National Kidney Foundation Spring Clinical Meeting. It discusses Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, and coronary artery disease and kidney disease. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Cynthia Silva. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. I really appreciate it. Well, tell us uh, briefly a bit about yourself, and then let's uh, jump right into this abstract. Sure. Um, I am a pediatric nephrologist, which is a kidney doctor for kids. Um, I did that for, you know, about 15 years. And then now, just over a year ago, I have joined Outset Medical, which focuses on improving the care for patients who have kidney disease and require dialysis. It's my understanding that the National Kidney Foundation says that there are certain uh, groups that are more likely than others to have kidney failure. Can you speak to this disparity and talk about these uh, different groups? Yes, absolutely. Um, Yes, you know, we have known for quite some time that blacks or African Americans are, you know, about three times uh, as likely, uh, and Hispanics, Latinos are about one and a half times more likely to have kidney failure compared to, to white Americans. And, you know, that has come to light more recently in the past few years with the pandemic kind of putting pressure on, on what we called and, and you spoke of health disparities. There, are, you know, it's a very complicated situation, but a lot of what we are really learning is that access to health care and differences in how early you see a nephrologist really play an important role in that outcome being different for different groups of Americans. So, you know, if you go on dialysis and you know, we call that term crash on dialysis in the hospital. It's very hard to understand what your choices are, what um, you can do to improve your health, how you can advocate for yourself, how you can pull your family and your social support around you together to support you. What we know is that African-Americans and Latinos, um, somewhat to a lesser degree, aren't seeing nephrologists before that happens. So it's almost as though, you know, all that education and preparation beforehand without that happening, that really impacts how well you do um, health-wise. Is that access or lack thereof based on uh, lifestyle uh, availability? What do you think is the yeah. reason for that? Um, you know, I think I think a lot goes into it. I, I think I would bucket in, into kind of three major groups. I think, um, to your point, availability. So, um, if you don't, if you're in a lower SES um, part of our society, so you have less disposable income, right? Your finances aren't um, as easily uh, attained as others. So maybe you don't have good health uh, coverage. Maybe you don't have any health coverage. We know a lot of working Americans, they're small business owners. You know, they don't have an employer who gives them coverage. You know how we sign up every month and just get health insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, So we know that blacks and Hispanics are are undercovered when it comes to insurance. So you're not going to seek out going to a doctor. A lot of times you're not going to go until something's really wrong, right? So that preventative portion isn't there. I would say the second um, big chunk are economic injustices, um, our long history of um, unfair housing laws in communities of color, unequal education systems, environmental racism, you know, the criminal justice system will all play into that. And then I would say the third bucket is really a mistrust from these communities with the medical uh, or healthcare system. 
You know, you have to be very vulnerable to your doctor, to your nurse, right? When you enter the healthcare system to talk about your problem, what you're feeling. Um, sometimes, you know, now in general, getting care in your home is a, is a big movement. Bringing someone into your home is a very private thing. So that mistrust can also be a barrier. I think these three things kind of swirl and mix together to make the picture complicated. You recently presented an abstract at the NKF Spring Clinical Meetings related to another at-risk population, which is Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. Tell us a bit more about this research, if you would. Yeah, thanks for, for allowing me to talk about that. You know, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders have some of the highest rates of, as you know, you mentioned in the in, in intro, you know, we're going to talk about coronary, coronary artery disease, kidney disease, um, and diabetes. This group has, has some of the highest rates. Geographically and economically, they have lots of challenges. Um, you know, infrastructure on the island isn't necessarily in the best repair. Um, the ability for uh, these groups to make income and afford their lifestyle on the island has been significantly impacted. And so, you know, in our um, delivery of dialysis in the United States, a lot of people are going to an in-center dialysis facility and receiving their care. We know that home hemodialysis is a better way to be treated on dialysis, but you have to be able um, to have access to your home, space in your home. Um, Your doctor has to talk to you about that. So lots of Pacific Islanders and Native Hawaiians can miss treatments when they try to travel to their end center dialysis facilities. Can you tell us what you think about what can be done to combat these racial disparities above and beyond Tableau? You know, um, specifically focusing on education and meeting patients where they are, kind of grassroots implementation of um, partnering with communities, regaining trust and educating on on preventative measures. A lot of what OUTSET is doing now, working with the National Kidney Foundation to go into communities to see what the unique challenges are. Uh, You know, as I mentioned before, how can you meet a nephrologist before the day you start dialysis? Uh, What are foods to improve your diabetes? If there's access issues to healthy foods, what can we do in those communities to change that? Um, increase community gardens, as an example, um, or talking in, you know, churches and mosques about our health where people feel safe to be vulnerable and open so that um, that education can go much further than maybe just a pamphlet and then, you know, you know, someone throws it away. They can really understand it mm-hmm. and engage in conversations in the community where they feel safe. And so I wanted to look into how outside medical starting a home hemodialysis program on the island improved care for, for this population. What did you find? What were the uh, final results? Yeah, so we found that um, a significant number of patients on the island transitioned from in-center dialysis to home hemodialysis. Mm-hmm. They were able to learn how to treat themselves quickly. Um, there was over a 97% treatment success rate on just shy of 2,000 treatments to date. Um, and because of the water and energy efficiency of the machine called Tableau that provides dialysis in the home, the state of Hawaii actually approved a financial rebate to these patients treating in the home, which was really uh, quite unique and novel. Doctor, can you give us a website where listeners can learn more? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so our clinical evidence page at Outset lists all of our um, education, um, manuscripts, anything presented at national conferences, uh, and this uh, poster that I spoke about from the American Society of Nephrology, as well as the National Kidney Foundation recent um, meetings is on www.outsetmedical.com forward slash clinical dash evidence. 
but the main landing page will direct you there as well. Dr. Silva, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Hopefully we'll speak again. Yes, please. Thank you so much and have a great day. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Cynthia Silva. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.